Today's verses, which are extracted from the book of Acts, inform us that early Jesus followers from different races and ethnicities formed a common identity as Christian while they share bread. So the commonality of those three passages is that they all include the sin of eating bread, you know, sharing bread, which we all, you know, we all do every week, yeah, on Sunday after sermon, ser yeah, service. So having a meal together is one of the most favorable ways to build up a relationship with other persons who I want to get to know. Not only between person to person, eating together helps us to feel a sense of belonging to members of a group. Many communities, such as club, project teams, and companies, thus have lunch or dinner sessions after their regular meeting. In churches, including MCC, practice communion, or we also say it is Eucharist, one of the oldest traditions of Christianity. Throughout the New Testament, we can see how Eucharist and following communal, communal meal became an, became an identity symbol of Christianity by integrating several races of the first century Roman Empire period. The tradition starts in the night before Jesus got arrested. Jesus gave thanks for a loaf of bread. All three Gospels use the same Greek phrase, arton eklasen, which means he broke bread, to depict praying action of Jesus. After this bread breaking, disciples shared food that Jesus thanked for it. In the Book of Acts of Apostles, Three different scenes in which characters um, break bread offer the racial and ethnic integration of the ancient church. The Breaking Bread Report is the fairy tale conclusion of the Pentecost miracle. In the earlier part of chapter 2 of the Acts, the Holy Spirit came upon the believers on the 15th, 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus and Peter gave a speech. People there were Galileans, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, you know, like, and so on. Like all of, yeah, like us from all around the world. Yeah, um, and 3,000 people were baptized and break the bread together. Breaking bread was a common behavior of people from different areas. In chapter 20 of the act, the action of breaking bread appears in a community that is rather um, diverse in race and ethnic than in chapter 2. The communal setting of this scene is the Christ-believing community in a, city, in a city named Troas. This passage is written in the first-person plural narrator so that we can infer that there are two different groups. First, Paul and his companion, and second, the local members. These two groups gathered to listen to Paul's teaching in the night. While Paul teaching, a young man Eutychus fell suddenly from the window because he was overcome by sleep. Then he was picked up dead. Paul went down and hugged him in his arms and proclaimed that his life is in him. Then Paul composedly went back to the upstairs and exec executed the Eucharist. We can see that after Paul's mysterious healing, the local people of Troas and Paul's companion group shared a meal together in the building. This means that the ethnic and race composition of Eucharist got expanded. And we can see identity as one Christian had been formed by people from different races and ethnicities 
in the latter part of chapter 20. It says, Meanwhile, they had taken the boy away alive and were not a little comforted. There would be two possible explanations of this emotion. First, they were comforted because Eutychus was alive. Second, they were very happy because they saw a miracle from the mental leader of the community. People who saw Paul became the witness of a mysterious event and they had time to build up the friendship with each other while having a fellowship meal. Thus, in chapter 20, breaking bread helped an identity formation between local community members and missionary companions, companions as a witness of the mysterious event. The last scene of the breaking bread in, Act of, yeah, in the Act of Apostles has a notable difference with other scenes. This scene is different in that this meal was not executed in a formal community. Rather, the meal was done within various people from Rome, Asia Minor, Palestine on a, on a, on a ship. Also, many parts of them were Roman Empire soldiers who were enemy to you know, Jewish people who are, who are missionaries and companions of Paul. In front of these people, Paul gave thanks to God and broke bread and ate it. Then other people on the ship encouraged it and took food for themselves. To see the process until Paul came to have the Eucharist, it was a very frustrating situation between various groups on the ship to Rome, the capital of the Roman Empire. The ship met storm at sea. The worst was that the crew tried to escape themselves in secret from the ship, remaining other people, although the ship was approaching the land. This text shows uncertainty and distrust between people on the ship. Thanks to Paul's advice, the soldiers then cut the ropes that held the lifeboat and let it fall into the sea. In the despair, Paul's Eucharist and fellowship meal was a help to get through the doubts and distrust between them. 276 persons satisfied their hung hunger and they finally threw the wheat into the sea. It is important that they had not thrown the food yet, although they threw important mechanical tools into the sea to lighten the ship. Throwing food can be done with courage when they have a belief that the ship will be landed somewhere. They discovered that they were approaching the land, but they did not have full faith for their safety. Thus, the crew who were skillful to treat the tools of the ship tried to exhort the lifeboat, and other people were in lethargy and depend on the food to continue their life on the ship. In this situation, Paul's Eucharist and fellowship meal gave them a new perspective that all of them can be saved by God. Thus, we can say that this scene shows a peculiar identity fo formation among the people from various countries and ethnicities in the ship who faced a really big dan danger. From this record of the Act of Apostles, we must know that Eucharist was an important method to integrate people of different races, ethnicities, and nationalities in ancient Christianity. So we must remember that Christians celebrate this integration while we practice Eucharist. I think this is the crucial point of um, Martin Luther King Jr.'s teaching too. In the stage, um, there is an unrighteous history that one group of people who are mostly Christians discriminated against another group of people in an institu institutionalized way only because the other group has a different skin color. Also, this discrimination was justified with the mistreat of the Bible and church laws. However, the Bible says that Christianity could start and expand because 
It included people from different races and ethnicities other than Jews. Having a meal together starts sitting next to each other. King's and previously Rosa Parks' devotion and passion made this possible. At least there are no more explicit laws in this country to separate people. We got the Civil Rights Act thanks to Martin Luther King Jr. This act also enabled Asians like me to migrate to the States. However, we still have works left. Although explicit and legal discrimination seems to be removed, discrimination became more implicit and nuanced in our society. Many people who are educated and rich in the mi middle class takes people of street who are people of color, mostly, with laziness and incapability, avoiding the history of discrimination. Also, the portion of people of color who are in leadership positions is still small. I think today's passage lets us know how Christianity has started by integrating diverse people together. I hope this, that this history of Christianity gives us chance to reflect on eating with other people and how to achieve the dream of Martin Luther King Jr. in 2020.